Uh, now looking at the two lane game, uh, a lot of big hits, momentum hits that weren't targeting. You know, because we look, kept looking at the scoreboard like, oh, that there's going to be a flag, but it wasn't. How does that make you feel of good safe hits that were big plays? That's how we want to play the game. We, we want to be physical. We want to you know attack ball carriers, whether it's uh, you know be physical up front, D line level, secondary level, linebacker level. Um, you know, go get after guys and that play. Coach used to set up right from day one when he got here. Play the chin out of your toes, downhill, flying around, uh, fast and physical. And and the guys did that on Saturday, did a nice job of it. Uh, and it wasn't just one guy. You know, Gerard, Malik, J-Mac, had several guys fit in that category. And, you know, you're always worried about, hey, are they hit them in the strike zone? And we, we always talk about that and teach that and coach that. And, and guys, you know, when they know what they're doing and, and feel confident, they play fast and they play physical and it showed up Saturday. Sounds like you see a 5 2 one with Gabriel, and not to give away the game plan, but how does that change how you guys maybe approach this game? Yeah, so, you know, we're going to prepare like they got everybody there. And, uh, you know, whether it's Gabriel, uh, whether it's the freshman quarterback, whether it's the, you know, the older Gatewood kid, whoever it may be, uh, they're all very talented. You know, the, the young the young kid, uh, 16, he, he is a young Gabriel. I mean, that's all it is. He's no different. The talent very, looks very similar. Um, you know, and, and Gabriel, you're talking about one of the top in college football. So um, they'll have a good plan, and we'll be prepared for all, all scenarios there uh, that could happen. And, um, you know, you just you got to be ready. Because if you're not and you show up and all of a sudden Gabriel's playing, uh, then you're behind the eight ball there. So we'll, we'll prepare for him. We'll prepare for the young kid. We'll prepare for Gabe Wood and, and all, all phases there. So um, And all of them are good players. And all of them play a lot, you know, some some good football at high competition levles. And, um they're certain worth you got it. You got your handfuls defend them. You had to do the same thing against South Carolina this year. Is it nice that in out of conference play you always got a pre prep of having to prepare for? Yeah, the yeah. If, if you're thinking back about you know you didn't know if it was going to be Zeb or Doty or who was South Carolina, so it was a different different little tweak there for each each uh, whoever was a quarterback. So we've already went through that once this year, and, and and really you know we talked to our kids about obviously we want to know our personnel who's a quarterback, who's a tailback, who's a receiver, who it may be. But at the end of the day, it's about us and how, how we play our fundamentals and how we execute, how, how hard we play, how physical we play, and, and playing together. So that's, that's been our main focus through all this, through all this and, and not knowing exactly what personnel may be on the field for them. Um, but at the same time, we want to know, you know what running backs on the field, what receivers out wide, what old lineman you know, is in the game, what quarterback's in the game. But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about us and how we execute and how we, how we play. How do you feel like your unit has maybe handled the success of the two-lane game this week? You know, coming off that, a good performance, but trying to get ready for UCF. Yeah, I think we're getting ready for a good football team in UCF, and that's been all their focus. And, you know, when you when you turn around from a win, whether it's Marshall or CSU or whoever it may be, and you got a good opponent, that kind of helps you get your eyes on that next opponent. And UCF, uh, you know, I, I told the guys this morning, they said, this afternoon, I said, hey, they're really a top 25, a couple plays away from being a top 25 team. I mean, a play away from beating Louisville, a couple plays away from beating the uh, Navy. Um, and then if they were four, sitting there 4-0, oh, we'd be talking about them in the top 25. And, and that's that's been all our focus. And it's, you know, hey, you know, good job on Sunday from the previous Saturday. And, and now it's all UCF and, and getting Orlando and, and make sure we're prepared for that. You get Stringer in there and he strings together a few hard hits. And now you got a lot of depth back there on the back end. What's it do for you a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's nice to have Gerard back and Gerard playing at a high level. And we saw that early in camp, went through a little, got banged up there a little bit early in the season. And, and now he's back and healthy and full speed. And, you know, I, I tell the guys this, like, it's more than going to keep those guys fresh and, and allow those guys when they are on the field to go play 100 miles an hour and at top speed and uh, full speed. And, and also, and I think I just heard Coach Pat, Kirkpatrick talking while I was in the hall, it keeps the competition there going. It holds each other accountable because I know if, if I slip off my game, I got somebody waiting right there that's going to take over and pass me. And, you know, we talk to them about Wally Pip all the time. Uh, but that's, that's true. I mean, if, if I'm not holding myself accountable and I'm not doing my job and my teammate is, he's going to pass me up. And, and Gerard's doing a great job. And, and that's not taking away from thing from Jai because he, he's playing well too. But uh, if we can get that at every position, I think it's just going to make our program better and make our football team better. And those guys – you don't see, I don't sense any jealousy or any of that between those guys or in any of those position rooms, but I just feel like, hey, we're making each other better and making our team better. And it gives us things we can do 
uh, on third down with some packages and different stuff like that that we've been allowed to do, um, you know, with those guys that are playing pretty well and getting them all back. Last year, UCF was your first game as coordinator. What do you remember about their speed and just that game in general? Yeah, there, there's a couple of things. Uh, first game in the American, and uh, I remember they were fast and fast. You know, the, the tempo was really fast, and, and, you know, no matter how much you talk about it, no matter how much you prepared for it, it was still fast, and then their speed, and just how athletic they were, and how good Gabriel was. I mean, he was, you know, we played against Tua when I was at the Citadel, and I, I said this the other day. I said, you know, that's what he reminds you of is Tua. And I don't know, you know, I'm no college expert quarterback or NFL quarterback guy, but uh, you know, playing against him, watching him for a year, he, he's got that, uh, you know, that tool set, and uh, he's a good player. But that that was kind of my looking back. Just how fast they moved, how athletic they were, um, and, and how good they were up front, and all those type of things. So, and they still, still same guys, still same players. It's not like those guys left. For the most part, you still got a lot of those uh, same receivers back, uh, same old lines back, same guys in the backfield. So, they're a handful. Uh, Xavier, well, he played more inside backer last week. How you know five games, and how would you say he's playing as far as going back and forth? You know? Yeah, I, I think Xavier's. You know, he's done a lot for us this year. You know, playing on the edge, playing third down packages, playing inside backer, and just his versatility moving around has allowed our defense to be more versatile and help us get our best 11 guys on the field. And just the fact that he can handle that from a mental standpoint and still go play fast, and I think he maybe led the teams in tackles last week, is saying a lot for him. So just really excited about him and where he's moving forward. And, uh, you know, it's going to help our football team. Coach, can you talk about the opportunistic defense that you have? It's like every week they're they're making big plays, especially when you need them. Yeah, you know, uh, 20, 21 bells our butt out a lot. <laughs> you know, he makes my job easy. And uh, he just had a pick in practice. I was like, wow, he's, he's fun to watch. Boy, dog. Yeah, you know, that's the, the guys are taking what we, we work every week and just taking it and you're seeing it on game day. And that, whether it's turnovers, whether it's playing downhill, playing fast, playing physical, uh, tackles, sacks, big hits in the backfield, whatever it may be. And they're doing a good job of executing that on Saturday and, and having fun and doing it. You know, you don't see guys uh, worried about me or, or this. They're worried about them te their team and, and playing for their teammates and having having a fun time doing that and in front of our fans. And, and Dowdy Ficklin, it was, it was a really cool experience, and those guys enjoy being in there. So it's, it's been fun to watch. When the defense is playing this physical, how do you get them to motor it back a little in practice? They Play times like team and inside run period. Well, we, on Thursdays we do go uh, no shoulder pads, and on Fridays we we don't have helmets. So on those two days we motor it back a little bit, but that's about it. I uh, you know it's I don't think and I, and and uh, honestly, like I don't think you can go practice off and play physical. And, and Coach Houston was here and tell you the same thing. It's, it's how we've always been. You can't you can't do things one way on Tuesday, Wednesday, and expect to go pre play a certain way on Saturday. So um, we don't. We're not as physical on Thursday and Friday, maybe. So, so feeding off of that in practice, you guys do a lot of dynamic, different things to teach muscle memory for these young defensive guys. Going into year two, having the same defensive coordinator, Coach Houston, stress that enough a lot. Um, how do you think that has benefited you and the confidence in rolling into conference play? Well, I just think, uh, you know, like you're talking about just reps, 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 and you learn from multiple reps, you know, uh, You've heard different stories. People say you could have 20 something reps to to do, you know, perfect the skill or somewhere it may be. But it's just you guys have confidence in it now. They've done it so many times and feel confident in it that they can go out and they don't have to think about, hey, what I'm actually doing here. I can just go turn it loose and play fast. And, you know, it's, it makes our jobs as coaches easier. Um, and, and then they feel, you know, the guys feeling confident that, hey, we've done this before. Or, hey, it come, comes, uh, you know, a couple series and, a certain ball game, you can go back and recall, hey, remember when we did it this way? Or remember when this happened? We want to go back and do it this way. Uh, or look back, you know, uh, not to go back to Tulane, but bring it up to Tulane. Like, hey, guys, they hit us on this run last last year. They're going to come back to it. Here's how we want to play. Here's how we want to fit it up. And our guys have done a really nice job of taking that and taking it to the game field. So just really excited about that and hopefully continue to do that down the road. Coach, how do you practice for fast yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good question because, you know, you're trying to make sure you stay fresh for for Saturday. But every rep, we tell our guys, if I don't get a game speed rep at full speed, then when I come Saturday and it's full speed, full go, and they're going 100 miles an hour, I'm not gonna be ready for that rep. 
You can walk through it, you can jog through it, but it's not the same as it being a full speed rep. So we we, we just preach, hey, it's gotta be full speed, it's gotta be a game rep and getting yourself ready for game day. I always tell my basketball story. I know you guys wanna hear it. Um, <laughs> and I was, a, I was really, like basketball was my first love. Like that was my thing. And I know you can tell that by looking at me that I was a really good basketball player. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I go in the gym and shoot and shoot and shoot. And uh, a high school coach said, hey, you can go in there and shoot and shoot and shoot. But if you're not catching the ball, you know, jump shot, game speed, burn over here, make a move, game speed, game shot, you know, somebody's on you. That's not doing you any good just to shoot a set shot. Anybody can shoot set shots. But if, if somebody's on you and, you you know, you've always shot it's a set shot, you're not going to be ready for that jumper. So I try to tell our players that, and they just kind of look at me a little backwards and sideways and, those kind of things, I don't really trust me. But that's it's the same thing. Like, I got to go to the gym. I got to shoot those jump shots. I got to go to the practice field. I got to practice, you know, before I knock that off. Uh, I got to practice full speed, game reps, and, and that way I'm ready for game day. So it gets me in that mindset. How do you feel they're handling the hurry-up offenses? How, how do you feel like they've improved through the years? Yeah, you know, that's something we made a big emphasis over the last two weeks. You know, and, and we do it versus our scouts. We scripted out the tempo situations, um, you know, or the hurry huddle situations or just different areas there. Obviously we're making our kids aware of when they're gonna happen, those situations. And, and then we go against our offense, good on good. You know, we've done that uh, every, every day for the last two weeks, just to make sure we get in tempo situations. And sometimes those guys can give you a little bit quicker look than maybe a scout team. So, um, you know, and you got two minutes coming up, we'll work two minutes against each other. So we're getting that throughout the week and it's continue to, to focus on it. So we, we're ready for Saturday. Who was your basketball idol growing up? You know, I, I was a Carolina fan, so, so you know. So what did you want to be like? I, should, I probably shouldn't say that in here. Like, that's not good to say. <laughs> I was an NBA fan. <laughs> Dominique Wilkins. <laughs> Spud, I, honestly, it was like uh, Muggsy Bogue and Spud Webb. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, just. <laughs> if you find... I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Blue Edwards is a good name. Yeah. There you go. Blue Edwards. Blue Edwards. <laughs> he was the guy. There you go. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, appreciate, yeah, appreciate y'all.